Good luck to everyone because this battle is going to be bloody. Welcome to game number one in this best of five between Anagi Sports up against Echo. Man, and just like that, jumping into this one. And I got to say, the crowd here feels in a way different because I feel like there's actually some people on the Philippine side that love Kyrie too, and of course, Coach Yeb. So you have these different chants going on here. But again, the team that strikes first blood in the series is going to be massive for them. For sure. And honestly, I feel like no matter what, the Philippines is winning at the end of the day. <laughs> Whether you like it or not, there's a player and a coach from the side of Onyx. But this is Melissa's debut. Assassin Dave, walk me through these lanes. What should we expect in these early laning phases and where their resources should be invested in? I mean, it seems like so far, early game, it's been pretty peaceful on both sides. In bottom lane, it's a Joy versus a Grok. If you be a little bit of tanky on Grok, Joy's not gonna do anything. The same thing, vice versa, other side. But speaking of that, in the mid lane, though, Yep, Keyboy. Keyboy, just gonna... find a little bit of poke, but not gonna be too much. On the top side, Lunox versus Melissa, it's gonna be like similar stuff. Like, right? you know, to even trade off, but you're not gonna see too much. It's gonna be pretty peaceful laning phase. Again, it comes down to Keyboy versus Yaoi. Who is gonna engage first? Keyboy does have the early game advantage because he is oh. Kufra. Speaking of that, here we go. Not looking good here. Onagi Sports wants the first blood. Kyrie on the mark. Able to take down Yaoi with that Destin or not, and it just played out so perfectly. I don't know about you, but it does kind of feel that Onik needs to make that first move all the time. They can't, it, they cannot play defensively against Echo, and, and Echo generally is going to be much better at the counter engaging, stopping this aggression. So now they have to take full advantage of the early game to start their lead. Man, oh. and right now with his first turtle oh. being up here, already having that advantage, but it's going to be Carl Tz that started us up. Notice too, Sans has that Divine Judgment available to them. They've got the numbers advantage, they've got the space here. They're going to go in, the flicker comes in. Turtle still looking to be up here, Dunny oh. comes out. Kyrie able to secure it though. They're still going to continue, Sanford going in. Boots trying to get away here, Carl Tz, oh. a Brazer trap. Can't get a kill though. Oh. Onik Esports taking the turtle. Wow, that was disgustingly close to a steal there coming in from the Xavier overall. Didn't have the enlightened form just yet, but if he did, I think that might have been the difference maker. But so far, Echo played it well. They only man they only got caught up once way before the turtle. But in that situation, you would expect more from Onik. They're playing more disciplined this time and showing a lot of respect to Echo. And this is why this is a grand final worthy type of level gameplay, right? You saw the turtle gameplay. It's uh uh Sanford on the joy going to the back line, but Kufa, keep away with a beautiful skill too, canceling the skill too, canceling the skill too of Joy, so Joy cannot dash, which allowed Kyrie to have the room to dish out the damage. Same with the Grok, same with Boots, right? Beautiful zonage to the entire side of Echo, which allowed the Granger to secure the turtle and actually walk away safely. You know, I actually thought Echo was gonna find like a retaliation, a kill or two, especially in Boots, who was so deep, but their objective was really clear and execution was crystal. Yeah, I think they also understand that right now isn't the time to fight. They do have their ultimates. And yes, they're a little bit more ultimate reliant, but at the end of the day, it's still the items, the numbers here. Oh, oh. TZ might be in some trouble. Okay, they jump in for Carl TZ. Should be fine, though, but it's four members here for Onik Esports. They're gonna back off for now. And, you know, like you guys were saying, it's really... Echo Philippines does not have the firepower yet, especially we don't actually know how this Melissa is going to work out so far because it's the first time it's come out in the tournament. And you do know that Melissa needs some time to build up here. Comparison, especially when Kyrie is running the Granger, a lot of that damage, a lot of that burst is already coming out through those skills of the Granger. So looks like oh. they're going to put some focus here now. Yawi going to back off for now. Keyboy there to help as well. So. Nothing for now. Well, I think if we're talking about Melissa, we need to categorize her, right? Anybody who uses the Golden Snap are two item marksmen, or so what I like to call categorize as two item marksmen. <laughs> Melissa kind of falls into the category of Irithel, where you kind of need four items before you feel almost four. unstoppable. Oh. Well, there we go. Yeah, we're going to flick her in. Divine Judgment, they're going to find Booty. Wild charges out, though. Carl Teasy securing the turtle for now. They might still press the situation here. Keyboy going to take a couple of hits. Should be able to disengage just fine. And now it's going to be a fight here for this purple oh. buff. Combined judgment on Carl Teasy. The terrifies there. Can they grab the kill? Oh. Keyboy with a revenge. It is Kyrie that takes down Carl Teasy. Wow. Beautiful. Beautiful. What a beautiful play there coming out from Sans. Copying the divine judgment. 
and actually Wombo comboed along with Keyboy, right? He with the pull and with the ball, it was the ultimate from Kufa. It's absolutely beautiful to watch. At the same time, I gotta say, this is the some like downside with Granger when you pick this character. You can't really get territorial control because this character is so easy to dive onto. And you need a lot of protection just now. That's a very, very nicely done from Aqua to zone Granger away. But they're a little bit too aggressive there. Just bit a little bit too much <laughs> more than they can chew. But speaking of that, Onik decided to back away and play a little bit more safe. I do that too on my when I play Kufra. <laughs> you know, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? Which way is it going to go? It feels like they're go. really dedicated to this top side, though. Well, oh, no. he's going to charge up. Onik Esports taking the dis disciplined route. They grab that tier one turret, disengaging for now. I think overall, on again, very nice aggression that we're seeing from them. But also, the fact is that Sans Ooh. has that flexibility. They don't necessarily have to take the Divine Judgment. It's just a really powerful ability overall. And it feels like a waste to not take it, especially when Call TZ wants to peel for the rest of the team. So the easiest answer, just pull that front line away and jump right in to open with the Death Sonata. And also, I gotta say, Echo, despite the little bit defeat in the early game, just now when they have two dash, but think about going to the long term, going to the late game, right? The mm. skill in game is definitely leaning towards Echo's favor. They have the Melissa late game. It's a mark, attack speed marksman going to late game. He's going to shred every single frontline tank, right? I'm talking about Boots is not even a tank. He's going to build damage, a little bit of hybrid. Keyboard is going to disappear if he goes in and misses the skills. Now, the thing here is the playmaker is the Wombo combo. Is Kyrie going to sync with Boots and Keyboy to jump in together? Which I'll find out. Here we go. The third turtle, third and last turtle of this game. Well, Kyrie going to commit the ultimate here. Oh, Go, goes in with the Charge! Carl Tizzi able to scare it. Yeah, he's gonna be in trouble here. They're trying to follow up. Sands can't get the pull he wants. Sanji taking the Sands down. And now it's EW on the run. Dawning Ooh. Light comes out. What a brilliance to dodge the Dawning Light. It's only gonna be one down for now. Onik Esports giving the call back, but they lose the oh. turtle. And Seal Play gonna come out. Nothing committing just yet. Keyboy spinning around again. <laughs> but all they can do is defend for now. Oh, they finally, okay, so now they back off, they're looking for the reset, there is a good push on that top side, that tier one technically should fall, but wow, Yaoi, that reaction time to the instant flicker coming in from Boots and locking him down with the Divine Judgment, and who else can produce that? Who can produce that move? Yeah, but going to the late game, you know, I also want to go back to the point that Akko is playing the scaling game, right? Now, scaling me, and, and they're winning. You know, you have Senji under the Xav this Xavier, if it gets you late game, once Xavier finished three core items, especially the Clock of Destiny, Lightning Tronchon, it's going to be absolutely insane. Oh, speaking of that, here we go. Echo playing a little bit more aggressive. Oh, yeah, he doesn't have the flicker available, so he couldn't commit exactly the way he wanted to, but it just backs off for now. Again, they got to respect this damage also coming out from Kyrie. You saw he just picked up that Malefic Roar. Go. He's going to hurt much more. Keyboy going to charge up. Ooh. Under the turret he goes. He's oh. got the flicker. He's going to get the buy judgment himself. Dawning Light comes out. It's Benny Cutie with a kill here. They're going to back off, still taking their time. They're happy the one kill. And Onik Esports going to back off. That was so nice. Now we have a very clear idea of how Echo wants to play, right? It's a hook, spear, and shield strategy. Very similar to Mincitar. You look to hook that one person in, the call TZ comes and blocks as much damage as he can so that Onik cannot follow up with the Death Sonata. He just needs to be in the right place at the right time. At the same time, that does mean the bottom tier one tower is in trouble for the side of Onik. But Echo now, with the pressure they gain, they're able to easily push a lot of pressure on the bottom side. Speaking of that, here we come. Okay, Carl Tizzi was there. He had the vision. Lord's gonna be up now. Both teams, you're gonna see them just kind of ensue this Lord dance. And you gotta also keep an eye, right? Sans does have the divine judgment. So right now, oh. Echo knows this. They're not gonna commit. I mean, topside, Joy has to actually maintain that wave. And Onik, even though they could want to bait out a fight here, I don't think they want to start it too soon unless they know the positions of the Echo members. And now they're walking up. Like, you can see that Yaoi is oh, very clear where he's going to be. Keyboy looks for the engage. Yaoi knows Sanford's going to go oh. in. It's Kyrie that secures the Lord. Sans could be trouble. He's going to flick around. Sanford grabbing the kill. Echo looking for a collapse here. The Dawning Light's going to come out. It misses its mark. Oh. Kyrie going to be in a bad position. Has to go out. Keyboy, though. Sanji unleashing. Appraiser's Wrath will miss. Not finding the mark, but CW falls as well. And Echo is punishing Onik Esports. Huge mistake there coming in from Onik. That Mystic Field into the tri buff, cutting off an extremely crucial funnel point. And just Onik members walking into it and getting caught up, even though it was clear the Mystic Field was active. 
Oh my god, and that's just show you how deadly Joy can be on the EXP laner. He literally won we 5 right? He walked in, popped the Vengeance, and what are you gonna do? Sense just died, and Kyrie was trying to help. Nobody can help. You know, because he's so tanky, he has immunity to claw control. At the same time, if you hit him, you're, it's like hitting yourself. But worse, he doesn't have a shield, he has an ultimate, just to take all the damage and reflects onto you. So, what a beautiful, beautiful character. Beautiful pick here, in this case, to dive onto Kyrie and dive onto Sans. Here we go. Gonna come out here. They get the oh! wild one orange. But the getaway comes out from Benny Cutie disengaging the fight. Great reaction time coming out from Echo. Boots needs to realize yeah, that he's yeah. becoming a little bit more predictable and he needs to make sure that his passive is on a line when he does it. Even the smallest 0.5 cap in his passive can get countered. This is nuts. This is absolutely nuts. Let's take a look at the items of the Power Spike. Melissa already finished three core items. His damage online is not going to be really good against tanks because he doesn't have any penetrations, melee damage, and critical damage. Look at Granger, though. It's Hunter Strike, Malefic Roar. This guy is being pure penetration. It's just going to be that burst of skill damage. Here we go. Oh, no. Are we going to find his target here? Keyboy's going to be in trouble. Oh! Razor Brown going to come down, but the stun comes out. A massive revenge. Yowie's in trouble. Carl DZ falls. It's on against Boy. Sports trying to turn the tide. Oh. But look at Sanford. Double kill for Benny Cutie as well. It looks so good. But it turned out bad at Veronica Esports. What a counter engage here. You think you're gonna take out your boy Keyboy? He makes the play after absorbing and soaking so much. But Benny QT, Inspire, and a quick puppet, chunking out four people at once. I have to see his items. I need to know how did he do this? He is building pure burst, right? Now Speaking of that, it also is a tough pass for CW. He has to find the flanks, he has to find the Ruby DD combo onto the back line, because if he doesn't, this is gonna spell trouble or doom for Onyx Esports. I mean, again, this is a skilling game. The later it gets, the worse it gets. And there are two hyper carries for Echo Sider, right? You have to worry about the Xavier, you have to worry about the Joy, uh, sorry, you have to worry about the Melissa. I mean, which one do you go to? As long as they don't overlap with the position, you have to find the most important one. I think at this point right now, it is going to be Benny QT. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you have a really big decision here, here to go. make on who you're going to focus if you're on a keysports here. And especially if Sans can get that Divine Judgment, they're going to force Echo back off this Lord the best they can. But Carl Tz, still going to continue it. They're going to look for the advantage the way they can. Also, Sanford, keep an eye on him, making his way down to the Lord fight. He'll conceal, conceal play, gonna come out. Keyboy gonna get caught with the Divine Judgment. Can he get away from there? Tyrant's Rage comes out. Oh. Keyboy's still gonna be alive. Coral TZ falls into what? the foot. Mystic Field comes out, Donning Light. They get oh. the flicker, but look at Sanford. Under the turret he goes. Still looking for another kill. Arnick oh. Esports shutting him down. Paying the That's price. Not. But Benny Cutie's still here. Boots in a bad position, but Echo's gonna Ooh. call it off for now. Oh, Keyboy's still alive. My god. Okay, a two-for-one trade. It works out for Onyx, but I think now is the right time to talk about battle spell economy right now, because that's the only difference maker for Onyx to be able to get in and out of fights consistently without their battle spell. They can't really force out plays. They cannot really get as much value as they want to out of their wild charge or even the tyrant's rage here we go another potential fight here but this lord is so very important to break even for both sides oh echo right now maintaining about two to three thousand gold lead at 30 minutes into the game that's almost nothing you're absolutely right about the battle spells for echo they still maintain a lot of flicker i see two flicker with red tree meanwhile for onyx esports they they're down to one and that's on boots alone right if he's able to find the flank Oh, here we go. Speaking of oh, flank. Sanford gonna start it up again. Yeah, we gonna go Keyboy. in. He grabs the target. Kyrie still able to get out here. Lord, still oh! looking to work Keyboy finds Yowie. Coral Tz gets the retribution off. And Benny Cutie gonna be able to unleash here. It's a double for now. Echo Philippines still gonna look for another. Oh! Mystic Field comes oh! out. The dawning light finding to Sanford. Pressing the situation. Oh! Kyrie, the outplay comes out. It's Sandy that falls. Oh, that has got to feel so bad for Sanford. He popped the Vengeance, he had everything, but the damage was just way too much. Sans, please don't die here. Okay, he's still alive, but it's terrible. Oh! oh! Benny is Cutie! Okay, is he okay? Are we he's good all right. now? He's all right, all right, all right. All right. My blood pressure isn't, though. <laughs>
Oh my god, what a back and forth game so far. The team fight, just when you think it's gonna lean towards one side, it turns around and lean towards the other side. I mean, at this point, like, I don't even know. Ana can still have a chance because their mechanic is so good. You see the dive that's now come from Stanford. I really thought Stanford was gonna get to the back line and kill Sans along with Kari, but that's not what happened. They turned it around. Can I just say, Melissa's having an amazing debut here yep, in yep. M4, and that's what we're seeing. You know, Sans able to get that Divine Judgment that could be crucial for them. They gotta be careful here how they juggle this Lord around, protecting the top side here. Seal play is committed. Onik Esports still gonna hold on just fine for now. Sanford trying to clear that mid lane. Onik Esports still able to hold the high ground for now. Everybody getting in position here. The first one to pull the trigger, it's Onik Philippines that backs off. All right, if we're looking at the total gold between both of these teams, even though Echo has a 3.1k gold lead, if we're look, talking about power spikes here, Onik, their core members should have the right items. We're looking, yes, Ludox, four items already completed. Yep. We're looking at Granger, expected to have four items, no problem. Same goes for the Valentina, but on the opposite end, we're seeing that even Xavier, he's ready to party now. He's scaled and almost maxed out his items. I do want to point out, Melissa have Athena's shield. You know, this is going to be really, really good to not die in one shot. As long as this guy doesn't die in one shot from the Ruby DD combo from CW, yep. he's gonna turn around with Inspire, right? You know how much lifestyle he's gonna get just by activating the auto, auto attack. Well, that's what I mean. They're, Echo Philippines doing such a good job at allowing Benny Cutie not to even be in that position, right? Sanji using the Mystic Field if he has to. A lot of times, even Yaoi, if he's not initiating, he's peeling there for them. And of course, you have that uh, double, pretty much CC coming out from Carl TZ here. So, Onik Esports, slowly but surely, they can find those weaknesses in Echo Philippines lineup. But I feel like at this point, every time it's gonna come down to those Lord fights. Absolutely, and I think that's why Onik is playing really passively here. They're not trying to make active plays because they know how valuable their battle spells are. And considering their items, they know that they're pretty much even with Echo, and Echo might have a slight advantage in situational items. But as long as Benny QT goes down, they've got a huge advantage. Yeah, I also wanna point out Kyrie's item. This guy built two tank items, right? He has Brute Force Breastplate. He's going for Athena's shield as well. I mean, he doesn't have that much damage. He only have three damage item completely. Now, that means with the BP frontline like Fredrin, like Kaja, it's gonna be kind of hard. We already seen how much Senji is doing with Xavier with a Dawning Light combo. It's absurd at this point. And the Granger is gonna be hard to walk up. A uh, Wizen comes out. It seems like this might be a Lord they want to steal or just give it away to Echo. Oh, here we go. They're gonna come out with the concealed play. Lord gonna be half health here. Oh. Trying to get a position the best they can. Keyboy gonna charge up. Might look for that wide push. Oh. Dawning Light comes out, chunks a few members down. Here comes the call from Sanford. Gonna push them back here. Lord just gonna go in the hands of Carl TZ. But Onik Esports decides it's better to just defend. I think that was a good idea too. Three of the members, man, Sanji's damage is not to be messed with right now. But I think Onik understand that even if the Lord starts pushing in, it does mean that Echo kind of have to clump up together, which is something that Onik is looking to make a play off of because the Lord side, they only saw two members physically visible, but the rest disappearing. So that's not the situation they're looking for. They have to find the right puzzle pieces if they want to make it click. But it seems like this is now Echo's game to lose, right? They up 5,000 gold. The wave is beautifully synced. Now Lord coming in. There are a lot of skills being used mid lane. And here comes a dash. Here comes a dive. Lord gonna go ahead and do oh. work there. Yeah, we gonna flicker in. He's gonna try to get boots down. Keyboy there to help him out. Able to survive for now. On Keyboy's Sports trying to do their best Stanford. to hold on here the best they can. Carl TZ gonna escape the base. They don't want to get pulled either, as you mentioned, Dave. Echo Philippines, they gotta be careful. It is a 5k gold lead, but the wrong move could turn this game around. It could absolutely turn it around, and I think Onik, they understand it. They've got a decent amount of wave clear all across the board, and I think, especially coming back to the item build that Dave was mentioning about Kyrie building a little bit more defensively rather than hyper-aggressive, he understands that his damage overall isn't going to matter physically oh. against these tanks. Wait, the conceal play, One this might done. be it. Conceal play coming again, Keyboy, does he commit? Not just yet, they get the flip oh. out from CW, there's the Yowie quite low, it's gonna be Kyrie. an immortality for an immortality. He's in trouble as Keyboy Kyrie. falls here. Kyrie. Kyrie though, waiting there. Yowie's immortality oh, is bombed. Oh. CW able to clean up the kill, but it's a bad news for him as he falls in the bush. It's an even trade. Honestly, even though that CW died there, making it a two for two, 
isn't so bad when you're the team behind. However, we're kind of maxed out on gold here. It's not a matter of who's got the better economy, it's who can execute a cleaner play. Now, I gotta say, one more time, Kyrie's damage is falling off, right? You think Ranger has put his skill harder and harder in the late game, but just now you saw he did a full skill one damage onto the Fredrin. Yeah. And it, it almost did no damage, right? Tickled Fredrin, him. Yeah, just tickled him a little bit. I mean, at this point, you gotta be worried about who is gonna be the main damage. You even protect Kyrie. Is it even worse to protect Kyrie at this point? I think it's, well, I think Kyrie is a little more self-sufficient, and I yeah. think his ultimate is a really useful tool. Let's think of it as utility rather than hard damage at this point, because now they just need to slow them down enough to chase them so that Boots could look for an engage. Sans might be able to get multiple people, but the most ideal one is the Rube DD combo coming up from CW. Yeah, yeah. you know what I love? Uh, honestly, it's too late for this, but if Boots had the weapon mastery on the Gronk, <laughs> you know, because really, I mean, he hasn't, he hasn't been able to utilize the high end drive. True. And I feel like, you know, he's picked up those items on that Grok, but still, you kind of lose out on picking that high end dry instead of having a weapon mastery here. But still, P-Boy oh. gonna go find Sanford here. It's another Lord Dance. As Carl Tz gonna go ahead and start it up. Onik Esports getting in position here. Notice the positioning as well for Yawi. Might be looking for a pick. Sans does not have that divine judgment just yet. He's looking for Yawi as well. Carl TZ keeping it in this area for Echo Philippines. There's Yami, he's gonna pull boots. Do they engage on this? Carl TZ gets oh, the knock up. Boots goes oh. into the charge, but Sanji falls. CW, CW grab the kill, pops the winter trunch in, but gonna fall from Yami as well. Keyboy reinitiating, but he has to flick around. Carl TZ gonna force Kyrie back here. Now it's Keyboy in trouble. He goes low, can't get away as Sanford grabs the kill. I mean, this is a double core we're talking about. A Xavier is a core, yes, you can kill a Xavier, but what about Benny QT? Right, the Melissa, the scariest person in them on the map right now. That person's untouched. This two never overlap the position. That means there's only one person CW can kill, right, at this point. It's so hard, even if he gets on Benny QT, because the Athena shield is making it impossible to kill as well. Yeah. So, I mean, at this point, this is looking real, like increasingly bad for the side of Onyx Esports. For sure, I think Onyx have a really tough road ahead of them. I feel like Echo has some good protocols, and I think you know teams especially need to understand, or maybe even learn from this game from Echo specifically, the positioning that they have around these lords. It feels like you cannot fail. I mean, at this point, we've seen this a couple of times now. Oh. Onyx Esports gonna have to do the defense game for this Lord Martian up top, and every time it's gonna give it a little bit harder and harder. And really, I mean, if even the previous fight, Sans, again, was not able to have that Divine Judgment, and that is the key ultimate that he wants to take here, because then at least you can be the one to initiate these fights, especially in the defense of this base. Now Onik Esports, Ooh. once again, it's a dire situation for them here. Echo Philippines gonna work uh. on this mid turret for now. That's the pull, Keyboy's in trouble. Has the immortality for now, gonna be popped. But he's gonna go down here just, just now. While Charge did come out, another falls. Johnny Light's gonna come out. They have to work on the Lord. Echo Philippines working on the crystal. Another falls here, and that's gonna be it as Echo Philippines draws first blood in the series. GG well played, Echo take game number one and the Filipino fans here at M4 are going wild. But this is only the first of a best of five. Things could easily change and we have to take a breather for a moment here. Really think about this for a moment because this technically was the inevitable outcome if it was stretched out for this long.